In this video, we're gonna be looking at how you can use the Shortcuts app on your Mac to work with images. Now, this is part of a series of videos I'm doing all about the Shortcuts app, so be sure to check out the rest of those videos. I'll leave a full list of them down in the description. Uh, now, today, I thought we'd do two things, really. Uh, one of them is look at how you can resize images with the Shortcuts app, and the other is how you can add watermarks to your images with shortcuts and although we are only tackling two things there will actually be lots of different components of uh, shortcuts to learn in here uh, so I thought there were two good examples we're going to see how you can use a shortcut within a shortcut uh, we're going to see how you can share shortcuts uh, and various other things as well so let's get straight into it and I've started with a blank canvas uh, and we've just created a new shortcut so uh, I'm not going to go through all of that process if you're unfamiliar with the shortcuts app itself be sure to check out the rest of those videos this is video uh, seven in <laughs> this introductory series so there are some more in advance uh, of this uh, or before this rather I should say to get familiarized with the interface and so on so anyway with that said let's just get into it so I'm going to give this a uh, name and I'm going to call this uh, resize image so this is the name of our shortcut uh, get that capitalization sorted out <laughs> resize image and what we're going to do here is we want to have a, uh, a workflow where um, I tend to work in the uh, Finder in the file manager, if you like, um, but this could equally work with the Photos app itself on the on the Mac, and I'll just sort of explain how you can uh, decipher between those two. Um, but what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to have, uh, say, I've got a folder with some images. So here I've got two images. This is my <laughs> my uh, uh, Franken deck, <laughs> my stream deck and loop deck. Uh, by the way, I'll be making a video all about this. Uh, but here you can see this is the image, uh, and we can see the image size over here as well. Uh, happens to be uh, if my my little zoom function will work <laughs> one second there we go 1440 by 1440 so what we want to do is have an action that we can use to basically just um, switch this up and uh, change the size of it so the way that you can work with shortcuts is you can either trigger them from the stream deck see video 5 <laughs> you can trigger the, trigger them from the menu bar up at the top see video 1 <laughs> or you can trigger them from these uh, from the finder itself uh, so for example if i right click you can see that we get access uh, here to uh, these quick actions and here once we uh, create these shortcuts we have the option to add them in here so this seems like the most logical place for me to uh, actually install this uh, shortcut so that basically if I'm looking at this image and I say okay I want to resize that then I'll just be able to right click come down here to the uh, quick action uh, and then look for uh, the uh, shortcut that we're going to create to resize the image obviously we can then also assign a hotkey to it to make this a lot quicker but uh, for now that's what we are going to do so coming back to our blank canvas um, what we want to do in here is if we come over to these little controls over on the uh, the top right here uh, we can choose where this is going to be uh, activated from so uh, we can either have it in the menu bar but if we want to we can actually use it as a quick action uh, and I want to activate it from the finder not so bothered about it being a services menu as such so that's the only place that I want this to be activated uh, as I say we can easily add a keyboard shortcut a bit later if we want uh, but for now I'm just going to activate it from that quick uh, action menu so you'll notice that now that I've actually added that in it has already put this first little action step in and that's basically saying it's going to receive any input from the quick actions so that's meaning uh, it's going to use that as the starting point for whatever actions come later we are talking about image resizing though uh, and so it is uh, good to actually specify exactly uh, what we are doing here so what I'm going to do in here is rather than say receive any input from the quick action uh, we do just want to limit this to images so if you remember anything in blue is something that we have the option to uh, change or adjust uh, maybe a parameter that we can set so I'm going to come in here to where it says any and I'm going to click on that one uh, and you can see that there are all of these different types of input that potentially it might have it might be URLs it might be contacts dates or what have you uh, but we are only interested in this case in images so what I'm going to do is just click on clear which will uncheck all of those boxes now click in there again and just select images so now we are only going to be uh, using this uh, and this will only in fact be available for images now if there is no input when somebody tries to trigger it so say for example we uh, did have the keyboard shortcut assigned 
but there was no uh, actual image selected, uh, what would happen in that instance? Well, you may want it to be that uh, they could actually choose the image that they want to resize uh, at that point instead. So if there is no input, you can see we're being prompted here, what should we do? Uh, now this one is saying continue, so that means just carry on with the rest of the process, uh, but obviously that would be a bit pointless to resize nothing. <laughs> so let's uh, click on this and see what other options we've got. Uh, and this is the one that we want. Uh, you could either get it from the clipboard, so if uh, it was wasn't selected then we might have just copied an image so we could get it from there um, or there's this one ask for so uh, and stop would be just it just stops the uh, the process uh, but we want this one ask for uh, and it's going to ask for photos now what that means is it's going to actually ask for photos from your gallery uh, your photo picker I should say from the photos app but in this case I am working with files and so Although it says photos, and you might think that that means uh, images, that is actually, as I say, referring to the Photos app. And I specifically uh, want to be able to pick a photo file or an image file. So I do want to change that to files. Uh, it's a bit of a distinction, um, but one of them will bring up the uh, photos uh, photo picker and the other one will bring up the standard sort of dialog window where you can search for a particular uh, file in the, uh, in the finder. So that's what I want because I want to be able to pick these manually out of the finder. Okay, so uh, as I've said before, it's always a good practice to get into the habit of uh, giving everything a variable name. So I am just going to do that, even though this is going to start off as a short little shortcut. <laughs> uh, it will get more complex as we go along. Not complex, actually just a lot of simple steps. So uh, let's take that word complexity out of it, shall we? <laughs> it's just going to be a lot of simple steps and I'm going to take you through them step by step. So what we want to do here is set variable. Uh, so and by the way, that thing about complexity, a lot of things look complex if you look at the overall finished thing. Um, so I've been building houses in uh, Thailand for, uh, well, over 10 years. Uh, not so much lately, I have to say. I've been too busy doing other things. Um, but one of the things about that is when you've got a full finished house, you mind boggles as to where you would even start to either build it or design it. Uh, but actually, it's all just a series of simple steps. So this is much the same. <laughs> uh, and we're starting here with the foundations. There you go. Look at that for a uh, link back to that analogy. Uh, we're starting here with the foundations of something that we're going to build out uh, later on, which will appear on the outside to be more complex. But as I say, just a series of simple steps. I'm waffling now. <laughs> Let me get on with this. So I'm going to call this the image because this is the image in question. And I'm going to use this sort of terminology or nomenclature, if you like, uh, a lot going forward where we're giving these things specific names. So this is the image that we are working with. Uh, we'll come on to this as well when we start adding in watermarks and things like that. It's going to be good to be clear about the way that we name things and our naming convention. So this is the image and it is going to take this shortcut input from here uh, and what we want to do now is we want to actually uh, resize this image this is the point of this uh, shortcut so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the little search box the handy search box you can often find uh, lots of things in here <laughs> so I'm going to just type in resize you can by the way add these to favorites and have a, a list of favorites so just let me just touch on that once again uh, you can uh, search by uh, I've talked about this in the first video but you can search by uh, location different scripting shortcuts document related shortcuts media related shortcuts and so on and you can actually assign favorites as well uh, but I often find it's just as quick to just use the search box uh, and just search for what you want so uh, another little diversion there but there we go resize image I'm going to add that in it has just actually because this is the sort of next step you can see how it has put in that variable there so we have uh, we are resizing the image which is what we call that uh, input uh, and then the size so we can actually change the size uh, or we could change it to a percentage of its original size um, or we could do something related to like the longest edge so if you were trying to fit something into a particular square uh, you might not know whether the uh, thing was portrait or landscape you just need to know it's going to fit within that particular square so you might want to choose the longest longest edge but I'm going to be more specific about that and just call it uh, size uh, because then you can see that it's uh, it's already put in a figure for us here but if I was to take that out you can see it's given us the width and the height and we're just going to put in the size that we want so uh, let me just put in 500 auto height so that means it will set the width to 500 and then keep the aspect ratio exactly the same uh, and uh, maintain that aspect ratio and just 
automatically calculate the height. If you put in a specific width and a specific height, you may end up with some things where they end up like squashed vertically or horizontally. So uh, usually best to uh, leave one of those as auto uh, so that you maintain the uh, aspect ratio of the uh, image, aspect ratio being the ratio of the width to the height. <laughs> um, so that is uh, what we've done there. We've got the resized image now. So now what we want to do is actually save that image. So if I uh, come here and I'm going to type save and we can find this one here. So if I say file and then it's going to save the resized image uh, like that. Now let's have a look at how this works in practice. So if I actually uh, now just bring this over here. Uh, by the way, there's a, a few more steps that we need to add in to really make this work properly, but uh, you'll see that as we go forward. But now what you can see is if I right click on here and I click in quick actions, you can see that we now have our little resize image shortcut is now showing up down there in that list. So now I'm going to click on that and what it should do is it's going to pop up and it's going to ask me where I want to save it. So I want to save it in this same folder. You can already see there's a couple of extra steps here. Uh, click on OK uh, and bingo, we've got our saved image. And there it is. It has used the same file name. It's got the dash two because there are now two of them with the same file name. But if I come in to examine the, uh, the details of these files, uh, you can see that this one is now uh, 500 by 500. Whereas the other image, the original, was 1440 by 1440. So that is the resized image just there. And it's obviously reduced the file size from 516 kilobytes to 96 kilobytes. So that is basically how we can uh, use that resize function. But let's try and be a little bit smarter with this, shall we? Because uh, we can actually make this a little bit better. So how are we going to make this a little bit better? Well. There's a couple of things really. We could have a uh, much neater file name for a start. So uh, let's just work on that part, shall we? Uh, now, it is always good to get into the habit of uh, commenting as well. So I think what we should do is uh, just actually do a little bit of commenting in here just to make sure that we are uh, <laughs> understanding what we're doing going forward. So if I just type in comment, uh, then we can add in a little comment. So here, what we're doing, if I just drag this up to the top, so we're getting a, uh, an image, getting our image from the shortcut input. There we go, and we're giving it a name. Uh, next, what we want to do is we are going to resize the image. So we have uh, resized the image already, uh, but I'm not gonna save it just yet. I'm going to actually give that a variable name as well. So I'm going to uh, set variable uh, this might seem a bit overkill, but trust me, when you start doing more and more complicated things, it is a very good habit to get into. Um, so what I want to do is uh, here, resize, because we've added this extra step in, you can see how it's sort of broken this connection because it was just all flowing down. So now we've got uh, the image, we just want to click here and make sure we are resizing the image to that particular size. Now we want to take that resized image and let's give that a variable name and we will call it uh, resized image. Uh, by the way, with these, um, don't leave uh, any spaces. So you want to make sure that there are no spaces in your variable names. Uh, so that one is called resized image. Uh, let's just add another little comment in there. So I'm going to just uh, get a comment. And here we are resizing the image. Uh, I'm going to show you at the end how to share your shortcuts. So I will share these with you so that you can download them. So these comments are as much for your benefit as well as my future self. <laughs> um, so this is where we are resizing the image. Now what we want to do is we want to give it a name. Uh, so rather than uh, as we had in here, you can see how it just came up with this, uh, uh, the name of the original file dash two. We want to actually be more uh, explicit about that and say, you know, it's the re uh, resized one. You could also even put in the size uh, if you wanted. Um, now, in order to do that, we need to rename it, but we need to know what we're going to rename it as well. Uh, and so we're gonna rename it with the same name as the original uh, plus a little bit. So in order to do that, we need to actually get the name of the original file. So what I'm going to search for here is get name. 
So we are looking for the name of that original file. So get name of what? Well, we want to get name of the image. Whoops, Daisy, clicked the wrong one. <laughs> get name of the image. Uh, and I'm gonna give this a variable name as well. So set variable again. Uh, bear in mind that these things, once you've built them, they're done for life. <laughs> so uh, it seems like a little bit of work, but once you get into the habit of it, then uh, you can actually sort of fly through this stuff. Um, so uh, get name of the image and set variable to, let's call that image name, like that. Always over eager with my capitalization there. Uh, and uh, we're gonna just take that input, basically the name of that image, that is now our variable image name. Uh, so now what I want to do is I want to uh, basically set the name of this resized image. So here, let's just uh, add in a little comment, uh, just so that we know what we're doing. This is uh, getting the name of the original file. Uh, there we go. Uh, so then what we want to do is we want to set the name of this uh, resized image. So this is set name. So what do we want to set the name of? We want to set the name of our resized image. And I'm just uh, falling off the bottom of the screen here. Let me just scroll this up a little bit so that you can still see it. So what we want to set the name of, can we see that? Yes, is the, um, the resized image. And we want to set it to uh, basically this new variable that we've got, the image name. Uh, and then let's have underscore resize. So then we're going to know that it is the resized image. Obviously, if you were doing this multiple different times, you may have an instance where you need to, uh, for example, have a, a particular image. You want to create a particular size of it to use in one place and another image size uh, to use in another. So you might want to kind of chain these all together um, and then give it an actual name of the specific size rather than just call it resize. But for now, I'll just leave it like this and keep it relatively simple. Uh, so now we've given it the name uh, resize and then let's give that the, um, uh, so that is setting the name of that resized image. So now let's set a variable of for that. Uh, and we're gonna call this one uh, renamed image. So that will drop in the bottom, renamed image. So we've uh, uh, set the name of it and we've renamed it. So let's just add that in as a comment like this. So we're going to call that. Now we have renamed our resized image. Okay, and now we want to save that. So this is the end of this little part, but let's have a look at uh, what this is going to look like. So we're going to click on save file and we're going to save. What do we want to save? We want to save the renamed image. Okay, so let's try this again now, shall we? Uh, because now that we've completed that step, uh, I'm going to just delete this one because we don't need that one anymore. Uh, let's try and run this again, and we'll go to the uh, quick actions, and we'll go to resize image, and what should happen with a bit of luck is it will just check where we want to save it, in the next uh, example, I'm going to show you how to uh, just automate this process as well. But for now, I'll just leave it. Uh, so click on that. Uh, and there you go. We've now got our two images, the original and then the original with that little addition on the end where it says uh, underscore resize. Uh, and just to be extra clear about this, uh, one of them is 500. And that one is the one that is resized 500 by 500. And then the original is still the same original file name and it is 1440 by 1440. So uh, let's just go and have a quick run through the steps that were involved in that shortcut then, uh, just so that we can be absolutely uh, clear about it, and then we'll move on to another example. So what did we do there? We had an input that came from the quick action, so we can activate that by right-clicking on a file or an image, uh, well, actually, specifically an image, <laughs> and we gave that a variable name as the image, so we call that the image. Next, we actually took the image and we resized it and we gave that new uh, output a name of a resized image. So that was another variable called the resized image. We then needed to rename it. So we found the name of the original image and set that as a variable of image name. Uh, and then next, we took the resized image and we renamed it to <laughs> the image name from the original image 
underscore resize. I hope this is all making sense. Uh, and then finally, we just took that and we saved it. Uh, and that was the little workflow. So now we've got our little resize command and we can use that uh, wherever we want. So let's uh, try and create another one. Now, just one little thing here. You remember at the beginning, I went in and I had to uh, select these to use as a quick action for a f from the, uh, the finder. And if I come over to my uh, list of shortcuts now, um, you'll notice that it isn't actually in the uh, main part here. Um, but if you look in these ones, quick actions, these are ones where quick actions have been assized, uh, assized, assigned. <laughs> and so resize images is in there. Now, if you want ones that work with quick actions, and you're creating a new action, you can. Uh, first of all, you can always just duplicate these if you want to sort of adjust what, an existing one. Um, but you can also just click in the plus here. And because you are in the quick action section, if I click on the plus, uh, what you'll notice is if I come back to the editor, it has created a new action, uh, but it's already got this first little step in uh, signifying that it works with quick actions. So if I just click on these little things again, uh, by default, it has added it to the services menu. So I actually do want this to work from the finder rather than services. So I'm just going to adjust that. But what are we doing in this video? What we're going to do is we're going to look at how to add a watermark uh, to an image. We're then going to look at how you could uh, loop these things uh, so that you basically could do this to multiple images. So the, the example that we used just now with the resize image, this could equally be batch resize. So you just basically highlight a whole list of photos or images and then uh, trigger the action and it will go and resize them all. Uh, so that's what we're going to look at with this with the, uh, the watermark version. So let's um, come and have another little look at my list of files and, and I'll show you what the intention is here. So I'll uh, come over to this view. Uh, I'm just going to delete this resized one because uh, we don't actually need it. Uh, and I've got these two images. And then I've also got this third image, which is basically my little logo. Now, this is a transparency. Uh, so you can see how it is a transparent PNG. Uh, so I might want to use that where I could put it into the uh, the corner of my, uh, my images as a little watermark. So we're going to look at how to do that. So the first step that we want to do is we want to uh, uh, take that input. In fact, let me just get a couple of things prepared here on the screen. Bear with me one second. <laughs> and uh, let's uh, come back over to this view. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do the same thing as we did before. We're going to take an image from the input. So uh, just remember, we come into here. We want to clear all of those. We want to select images because we're just working with images. Uh, and then if there is no input, I want to ask for a file uh, rather than a photo. And by the way, all of these, uh, instead of asking for files, I could just be doing all of this within the Photos app. And in that case, you would just select that as Photos. And uh, I'll show you when we come to save, uh, you can save it uh, into Photos instead into a particular gallery, as opposed to the way I'm doing it, which is saving it into the Finder. I'm still uh, in the uh, uh, file managing <laughs> mode. Uh, I don't do use the, uh, the Photos app so much. So in any case, that is uh, the first little step. Uh, and as before, we're going to give this a variable name. So I'm going to come over here and search for set variable. <coughs> there we go. That's the one. <laughs> and I'm going to call this the image. And next, what we want to do is, uh, shall we comment this as well? Because this one's going to be a bit long and I will uh, be sending this to you or rather you can download it if you want it. So here we are um, uh, choosing, choosing an image that we will add a watermark to. Okay, so that is the first step. That's what we're doing. We're taking this image and we're going to add the watermark to it. So this is assuming that they're going to be able to select whichever image, or I say they, it's always me. <laughs> I don't let other people come and use my computer. So this is assuming that, uh, that I will want to be able to select a file and add this watermark to it. Um, but the watermark in this case will always be the same. In fact, let me just give this a name uh, and I'll call it my take one tech watermark. Okay. So um, now what we need to do is we need to uh, get the image that we're going to use as the watermark. And uh, as I've shown you, it is this image just here. Uh, I'm just keeping all of these in the same folder for now for simplicity, but obviously uh, you could 
be storing these in all different places, having it saving to different places and all that sort of business. But for now, I'll just leave the, them all in the same place so it's easy to see what's going on. So what we want to do now is because that watermark image will always be the same, um, then uh, in this case, then what I want to do is actually find a specific file. Uh, again, if you were if you were doing this from Photos app, then you could look for an image or a photo uh, so you could find photo and then you could just pick the uh, the image that you want to use as your watermark out of photos instead But I am using a specific file So this is going to get the file and then in here I can click on this and then it's opening up my little uh, Dialog box to pick it out. So there is the file that I want to use Click on OK. So that now has grabbed that file. So now I want to give that a variable name as well So here I'm going to set variable once more, and then this one, I'm going to call this the uh, the watermark. Okay, so now we've got our, uh, two variables, and I'll add a comment. This is our watermark. This is our watermark image, like that. The spelling's atrocious when I'm trying to talk at the same time. Um, and uh, that now, if I just just do, I'll just do a little short run now. If I do the command, which is overlay, overlay image, so I can overlay image on image. So the uh, variables that we've got is I want to overlay the watermark onto the image. So if I click in here and click on watermark, and then click on here, and click on. Uh, image now it's going to put that watermark on the image now what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this as it is um, to show you sort of how this is working so far but there's a few steps that we're going to add into this to uh, really make it much better so I'm going to start by just running this as it is though now um, so that because I hadn't actually selected an image in the finder it's using this thing to actually prompt me to give it an image so I'm going to just select this one which is that particular image and now click on open and now what it's doing is uh, you can see how it's put the image over the top. Now I do have the ability to move that watermark around on top of that image. Um, and I also have the option to change the opacity like that, uh, or you can reset it uh, and move it down there, let's say. Uh, and now if I click on done, you can see that it now has put out that image with the watermark on it. So that's sort of showing how this overlay uh, function works. Uh, but there are a few things that are uh, wrong with this. First of all, the size of it. Um, and second of all, the position of it. And then also, uh, we haven't got into anything of uh, actually saving this out at all. Uh, now, what we can do is, if you always want to have the watermark, say, down in the bottom corner or the top corner or wherever it happens to be, um, we can actually define that. And we can also define the size of the watermark relative to the size of the overall image because sometimes you might have a really big image that you're wanting to add the watermark to. Sometimes you might have a really small image, uh, whereas the size of the watermark itself currently is always fixed. So if you had a uh, 500 pixel wide uh, image and you wanted to add a 250 pixel wide watermark well it would obviously take up half of the image size whereas if you've got a really massive image uh, then the uh, watermark may may well be too small so you may want to just set the size of this relative to the original image uh, so I hope that makes sense in terms of what we're actually trying to do here So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to delete this step for now because there are now a few extra steps that we want to do so um, First of all, we want to actually get a, um, uh, a width We want to work out what the water what what the watermark <laughs> Width is going to be so the way that we can do that is we can actually get some information from the image itself and uh, use that as the basis. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, look for a calculation, uh, calculate, because we're going to calculate this based on the width of the image. Uh, and in here, from this uh, instead of number, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually select the variable of the image. Now at the moment, we obviously can't work out anything of the image because the image is uh, an image. It's not, nothing that we can actually calculate from. However, when you've added variables in like this, you can always just click on them and you can find properties related to that variable. So in here, because I've clicked on the image, 
we can actually extract different information from there. So we've got the name, uh, the album that it's in, the width, the height, the date taken, all of these sorts of uh, uh, information, all of this metadata, the camera model. <laughs> so think about that. If you wanted to extract all of this sort of data, um, this is great for file renaming as well, where you can basically just extract all of this. I'll be looking at that in the video all about uh, file management using shortcuts. Uh, but for now, what we want to do is we want to actually get the width out. So there I've clicked on the width so now this calculation uh, is working with the width of the original image and let's say that we wanted this to be say 10% of that uh, of the width so we want our watermark to be just 10% of the width of the image so I'm going to click on the multiply and I'm going to times by 0 0.1 so that's now calculated 10% of the original image width so let's give that a variable name now so I'm going to set variable and in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say set variable name to uh, watermark width. So now we know that the watermark width is 10% of the width of the original image. So this is, just to be clear, uh, this is calculating the width of the uh, watermark based on original image um, and by the way just for when you are using this if you want to download this afterwards once I've shared it um, then you can see here this um, particular thing where we're choosing our file um, you will have to choose So you would have to go in and actually edit this to uh, basically choose your own file uh, here rather than this one, which is obviously the path to somewhere on my computer. Uh, and in this case as well, you could set that to be whatever size you wanted. Okay, so now we've got the size of our watermarked image. We can actually do that overlay procedure. So let's come back to the overlay again. And I'm going to overlay image. And what are we going to overlay? Well, we're going to do exactly the same as we did before. We want to overlay, this is just slipping off the edge of the screen, off the bottom of the screen for you. So let me do this again. We want to add, add the, uh, the watermark to the image like that. Now, do you remember how that pop-up came up before where it was asking us to position it and size it and everything like that? Well, if we click on this show more, you can actually remove that step. So we don't want to show the user the image editor. We want to just define all of this ourselves within the shortcut. So once you toggle that on off, then actually it brings up all of this information. Uh, so we don't want to show the image editor. We want to just specify this. Now we can choose the position of it. Uh, and then we can also uh, choose the width of it. Now we've got a variable now for our width. So if I come in here and go insert variable uh, and click on watermark width. So that is now going to set the width of that little watermark image. Uh, and let's also set the opacity. Let's say we want that at rather than 100%. Uh, let's say we want that as 50%. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to set that as a, a variable as well because we're going to go on straight on with the saving process here as well. So I'm going to come in here and set variable again. And this one, we are going to call this one the watermarked image. Watermarked image. So now we've got an image with a watermark. It is the watermarked image. Okay, so we've resized it. We've added in the watermark. We've resized that and we've uh, now given it a new name. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to actually save this out and we're going to do that same step as we did before. So where we get the name of the original image. So I'll just actually pause this and I'll just uh, join back in a moment when I've actually done that. Okay, so uh, this is basically just repeating what we did in the uh, the last example. So I didn't want to just have you sit down as I sit through me as I did exactly the same as before and added in the comments. So I'll just pick up where I was though. So we had uh, added the watermark to the overlaid image. So this is now we have the uh, overlaying the watermark on the image and specifying the size, location and opacity. Um, so then what I've done is because we want to rename this, uh, this image with the uh, 
the extension watermark or whatever we want to add. Uh, I've done the same thing as before. So I've got the name of the original image and given it the variable variable name image name. Uh, and then I've uh, set the name of the watermarked image to be image name underscore watermark. So uh, this was just as we did before when we did resize. I've just done exactly the same, but now this says watermark. Um, and then I've given that a variable name just as I did before as well uh, of a renamed image. Uh, so now we are renaming the image and we've got uh, uh, our image all ready to go, renamed, resized with the, uh, the, sorry, with the watermark resized and positioned. So now the last step is to basically save this. Uh, so if I do save, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this uh, this time rather than the user choosing where to save it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, click on this show more and then I'm going to uh, remove this option for ask where to save uh, because we do just want to specify exactly where it is and you'll notice that when I toggle that one off then it's asking me save something to shortcuts. Well it's not a file it is actually specifically the uh, renamed image so I want to save the rename, renamed image to and then rather than this shortcuts if I click on replace it will allow me to choose the directory so I'm just going to use this one that we've been using for this demo. Um, so that is now going to save it to there. Um, we've done quite a few things there and as I say it can look on the surface like it's complicated but it's really just a simple uh, a series of simple steps. Let's go and have a look at how this looks in practice. We'll come back and review this and then I'll show you how you can actually loop this if you want to apply it to multiple different files uh, in one go. So let's come over to the uh, finder again uh, and let's see how this actually works in practice. So if I uh, right click on here and then I click on the uh, quick actions um, you can see that we've now got this one TOT watermark that's what I called it so if I click on that then hopefully with a little bit of luck uh, bingo there we go we've got our new image and it's down here uh, and it's actually got the uh, let me change to a view where you can see this a little bit easier <laughs> there you go it's got the little watermark uh, right down there in the bottom corner uh, and it should be 10% uh, of the width of that uh, image so that is uh, as simple as that so that is how easy it is to have that uh, operate once you've set it up so uh, as with all things there's a little bit of upfront work to set it up but then you can clearly see how it can really sort of speed up your workflow but what if I want to just be able to actually click multiple images and have those all uh, spit out the results as well uh, rather than just one at a time so I'm going to delete this one um, and we're just going to try now to make a loop where basically it will do all of these in one go now to do this, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set up a second shortcut that basically uses the first one uh, to run the loop. Now this is a uh, a good little thing to a good good little example to understand how you can actually build up these little small building blocks in different shortcuts and then actually sort of combine them all together, much in the way you can in Keyboard Maestro as well. You can trigger macros within macros and all that sort of thing. Uh, if you're interested in Keyboard Maestro, I'll leave a link to my uh, Keyboard Maestro series up above as well, uh, because if this sort of thing is up your street, Keyboard Maestro might be as well. <laughs> um, but I digress. So let me uh, just create another shortcut, and I'm going to create another shortcut just as we did before and so here we go I've got a blank shortcut um, but what I want to do now is I want to basically uh, use what we've just created to uh, to sort of run continuously for however many images uh, get um, get sent to it uh, if that makes sense <laughs> so what we want to do here is receive uh, once again doing exactly the same as we've done in the first two examples uh, I only want images um, if there's no input yes we can ask for uh, photos but in actual fact we want files although they're image files um, and then what we want to do is we want to uh, basically run a little loop with this so what we want to do is if I do uh, loop repeat in fact is the word uh, so repeat with each and uh, what we want to do is we want to repeat each shortcut but we want to just repeat with that little shortcut that we've just created in the middle so if I just search in here for shortcut uh, then we can run shortcut and we want to pop that in the middle. So basically now what we want to do is choose the shortcut that we've got which was called, uh, one second, uh, we want to actually search for it. So it was the uh, TOT watermark and what we're going to call this is we're going to call this bulk watermark so that we know what it is. Um, so basically yeah we're going to highlight some images we're going to trigger this action from the uh, the little menu in the same way that we have been doing. 
it's going to take the uh, the input and it's going to repeat for each of the input uh, for each of the images that it has it's going to run each of them through the watermark uh, shortcut and then it's going to finish simple as that and if I click on show more you'll notice that the input rather than being just one image is basically like each of these images that's coming out so it's created its own variable which is repeat item and that is as it goes through all of the different files that we're going to sort of feed into it that is all there is to it actually and if I come over to the uh, the uh, file manager again or the uh, finder I should say <laughs> and then right click on any of these uh, and now you can see I've highlighted two of them and then if I come down to quick actions uh, you can see I beg your pardon I've missed one little step out there silly Alec let me just come back to this if you remember we do actually also have to make this available in the finder so uh, I just forgot that little step there <laughs> so let me come back again uh, and if I right click on that and now come into share uh, into quick actions, I should say uh, now you should see that we do have that bulk watermark as a uh, as an option there. And now when I click that, then with a bit of luck ah now because this is the first time we've run it, you may remember before um, it is asking for permission to run another shortcut. So this is that privacy and uh, uh, permissions access that you will have to give it the first time it runs so basically it's asking are we sure that we want to let this shortcut trigger another shortcut and of course we do so let's click on allow and then if I come back to my original thing it has actually just spat those out let me just do that for you one more time just so that you can see it actually doing it in front of your eyes so that you know I'm not just uh, tricking you <laughs> right click quick actions bulk watermark and with a bit of luck it should just spit them both out and indeed there they are so obviously you could do this with as many files as you want and so that is using the uh, loop command or rather the repeat command to basically loop through these actions pulling in that uh, other um, shortcut that we have created this is a really good little tool to uh, to know uh, where you can create these little subroutines and things like that and have them feed into uh, other shortcuts later. Now there's one last thing that I want to uh, show you and that is basically how you can share these uh, shortcuts and crucially how you can get these shortcuts that I've just created uh, and download them and have a play with them yourself. So what I'm going to do is uh, just come back over to this view for a moment uh, and if you are in your shortcuts uh, any one of these so let's call this uh, in fact let me take out TOT because it's just the watermarked image isn't it watermark image <laughs> so it will be more relevant to you then um, and then all you need to do is just click on this little share icon here uh, and once you click on that you get this option uh, down here you can obviously share it by email messages all that sort of stuff uh, but a great way to share it is using this iCloud link so if you copy iCloud link uh, and it says uh, anyone with access to this shared link will be able to view the contents of this shortcut they can download it they can't change it on your computer so you're not granting access to anything on your computer you don't need to worry about that it has generated the link and it's now copied it to the clipboard. Now if I just come over to a browser for a moment and I'll just paste that in. Uh, here we go. And it's just going to load this up. So this is that link. Um, so if somebody else was now following that link, let's say you pasted it into an email or into the description of a uh, YouTube video, for example, which is what I'll do. I'll leave it down in the description. Um, then all you need to do is follow the link and then click on this get shortcut. Uh, and it'll ask you, do you want to allow shortcuts to download the uh, shortcut? And then you'll get this little pop up. So just like if you were reviewing a, uh, a shortcut that was in the gallery, uh, you'll get the same thing here. Here. so you will be able to click in here click on the three little dots just check that it is exactly the one that we've just covered you'll be able to see all of these steps make sure that there's nothing malicious in there <laughs> um, and then you can just click on this add uh, shortcut and it will just add it straight into your gallery or into your list of shortcuts I should say so I will leave a link to these down in the description um, and uh, that is all for this video but don't go anywhere because in the next video what I'm going to be talking about is how you can use shortcuts with uh, PDFs on all the sorts of things that you can do with those and there'll be some other great tips in there as well so i'll see you there <laughs>